All right, physical science. So today we're learning about Bohr models and an activity um, using M and M's, and then give it. You're going to be given a blank uh, sheet representing the model, the basic structure of an atom, and you are going to add M and M's to the electron as electrons, protons, and neutrons for this portion of the worksheet that you're going to work on, or you are currently working on. So if you're watching this video, you've done what I've asked. It's not going to take very long to go through this. So in this first video you're going to watch, we're going to talk about Bohr models. So in a Bohr model, we are simply mo making a model of the atom. We've already kind of done this, but now we're going to give it a little bit more structure. We are going to show the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons that that atom has. And we are going to show what we call energy levels. And you're going to see what those are in a second. So I have three example elements on the board right now, hydrogen, oxygen, and magnesium. Whenever you are making a Bohr model, you always need to put the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and the number of electrons. So I'm going to write that on the board. I'm going to put a plus for protons and equals a minus for electrons and an N for neutrons. So to figure out the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and the number of electrons that the element it has, in this case hydrogen, I'm going to go to the periodic table. On that periodic table, you will look for the atomic number, and you will look for the element's name. So in this case, we're looking for hydrogen. Hydrogen is atomic number one. As we talked about already, atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. Um, that is the only thing it means. So if I have atomic number one, my proton number is one. So next to this plus, I'm going to put one. In my Bohr model, then for hydrogen, I'm going to draw one proton. Um, if I look at the negative charge, for simplicity, the number of electrons for hydrogen will be one because I have one proton. I should have one electron. And for hydrogen as well, because I have one proton and one neutron or one electron, I'm also going to have one neutron. That is going to be typical for all of these sample ones I give you um, for physical science. In chemistry, it gets a little bit more complicated. So when you get there as a sophomore or as a junior, you'll see that change a little bit. But for right now, we're going to say that if the atomic number is one and we have one proton, then we can assume we have one electron and one neutron for now. So I'm going to start by drawing my nucleus, the center of my atom. Um, so I'm going to draw my my circle in the very middle. In that circle, I'm going to put one plus, and I'm going to put one N, showing that I have one proton and one neutron. Around it, I'm going to add my energy levels. Now, an energy level is the circle or the orbit um, that an electron can be found on inside of the electron cloud. And each type of element will have a different number of energy levels. Now, hydrogen has one energy level, so I'm going to draw one circle around my nucleus. The reason why is because hydrogen is found in row number one of the periodic table. Because it is found in row or period one, that means I have just one energy level, meaning I draw one circle. So there's my one circle. Now, I got to put my electron on that circle, on that energy level. So we got to look at how many electrons I said I have. I, in this case, I have a negative. I said we have one. So I am going to put one dot on that energy level. This would be my Lewis structure, my, sorry, my Bohr model for hydrogen. If we go to oxygen now and we do protons number, electrons, and the neutrons of oxygen. Protons, oxygen, looking at the periodic table, oxygen is atomic number eight, meaning it has eight protons. We can assume that it has eight electrons and eight neutrons. So I'm gonna draw my nucleus. Because I have so many protons and neutrons in this case, I'm just gonna draw a plus I'm going to put equals an eight, saying that I have eight protons in my nucleus. I am then going to draw an N for neutrons, and I'm going to draw an equals and eight neutrons in my nucleus. We're good there. Now we have to draw our energy levels. We have to look at what row oxygen is or what period oxygen is on the periodic table. 
If we look, it's in row two. So I need to have two energy levels, two circles around oxygens, nucleus. So one, two, you can even, even label them if you want. Energy level one, energy level two. Now we have to add electrons to it. Now we have eight electrons. Now we don't just put those electrons on those energies, energy levels however we want. There is a spot they need to fit. So the first energy level can only have two electrons, not three, not four, not 28. Energy level one can only have two electrons. The reason why, if you look on row one of the periodic table, there is only two elements in row one, hydrogen and helium. So I can only have two electrons in energy level one. So I'm gonna draw two dots. There, we got two electrons. Now I still have six more to do. I've used two, leaving me with six. I'm gonna draw those other six electrons spread out on my second energy level. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. This is my Bohr model for oxygen. We're gonna do one more. We got magnesium. Again, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Figuring out how many we need. Looking at that atomic number, magnesium. Atomic number 12, 12 protons, 12 neutrons, 12 electrons. Drawing our Bohr model now. We got our nucleus in the center of that circle. We got a P for protons, we're putting a 12 in there. Or if you wanna put a plus for protons, that works too. We've been doing that so far. We're gonna put an N, 12 neutrons. That's our nucleus, it's done. We have to figure out how many energy levels we need. So we gotta look at what row magnesium is in. Magnesium is in row, not one, not two, but three. So it is in period three, meaning I need three energy levels. One, two, three. We just went over. We have 12 electrons. We need to fill them into our three energy levels that we just drew. So we're going to look. Energy level one, two, three. Energy level one only can have two electrons in it. We've already talked about this. So I'm going to draw two dots. Those two electrons filled. We're left with 10 more electrons we need to add in. Energy level two can have a total of eight electrons. That is because there is eight elements in row two on the periodic table. So I'm gonna add in eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, now I've used a total of 10 electrons. I'm left with two. So I have to put them on my third energy level, which currently has no electrons in it. One, two. Here is my Bohr model for magnesium, oxygen, and hydrogen with varying levels. We will never go past energy level three when we're drawing this. They get too difficult after that. But this are, these are the basic three. If you can do this basic process, you can make a model of any element. Now, the reason why we do this is because this will allow you to see how atoms are going to bond with other atoms, how compounds and molecules form, and that's how we make the building blocks of stuff in our universe. Without the, being able to draw these, you would not be able to understand or predict how many electrons could be taken or borrowed from another element in an ionic bond or how the electrons could be shared in a covalent bond. So thank you for listening. There's going to be another video that you're going to watch in a second. It's going to be a little bit shorter than this one. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.